What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the show. Quite a week. Lots to talk about. Um, yeah, we got some news we're going to be chatting about. IMF refusing to take the L on El Salvador and plenty more. We've got our good friend Nico from Simply Bitcoin here to fill us in what's been going on. Um, man, we are so lucky to have Nico here. He's such a busy man. <laughs> he does. Dude's always coming from another show or has done 17 shows throughout the day and is managing other people doing other shows. And I don't know how he does it because I'm just one dude trying to get out like three shows a week and I can't believe I still have my hair. Uh, so nonetheless, uh, happy to have them. If you're not subscribed to Simply Bitcoin, please go do it. It's very important. It's very awesome. Uh, this is live. Anything can happen. So I defer to my good friend, Bill, here. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live. Fuck it. Do it live. I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live. And thing sucks. If you have not already, like, subscribe, share, all those things help get this content in front of more eyeballs. I am Ben with the BTC Sessions. This is your daily session. Huddle the Bitcoin. Before we bring in Nico, let's take a look at where we are in the market right now. We're sitting at $24,055. We did, if I'm not mistaken, get up to 25 k today. Uh, re the return of volatility. Um, nice to see a little bit of, you know, a couple little green dildos here and there. You know, don't get too excited. I know. I don't, you, know, you never want to get overzealous, uh, you know, as you're going through the bear market. Is it over? We'll never know. Um, maybe just by me saying that, it'll drop another grand. So we'll see. <laughs> Nonetheless, uh, we are sitting uh, at a single dollar. You can pick up 4,157 sats. 91.87% of all Bitcoin have been mined. That's 19.29 million. In terms of fees, actually just dropped a little bit. It was up higher, uh, but it looks like next block is 11 sats per byte. In and around the same, even if you're willing to wait a bit. Um, and we've got about 70 blocks in the backlog, uh, which is pretty close to almost having the full mempool. Um, so uh, time chain calendar, by the way, uh, they've just added a few new metrics and it'll start to show in the next couple updates, it'll show uh, what they're purging. And so what that means is when you've got your mempool full, it'll say, oh, it's purging any transactions below one sat per byte or below two sats per byte good information to have because you don't want to send through a one sat per byte transaction if it's going to be immediately purged from the mempool. So uh, hats off to TC. Uh, excellent tool. Always, always tinkering. So love to see it. Shout out to sponsors of the show, Nunchuck. They are killing it with their wallet and their uh, inheritance planning product, uh, their Honey Badger product. So this is basically an assisted multi-sig where they will hold a key. There'll be a signer for small transactions and a signer of last resort for uh, your two of three multi-sig. I should say two of four. And then they also have an inheritance plan where you have an inheritance key and you can easily pass on your sats to your loved ones and set thresholds and all that kind of stuff. And the beautiful part about it, no KYC. No KYC. You can sign up with nothing more than an email address and eventually just a private key. Uh, and that will give you full access to everything. And the ease of use for family members down the line when they go to claim their inheritance is incredible. Check out my, my full tutorial on it. You will be impressed, I think. Uh, up next, we've got coinkite.com. Uh, I love my cold card. It's awesome. Cold card mark for to secure my stack. Incredible stuff. Uh, Best hardware on the market, to be honest. Um, did you see their new drop, Cold Card Q1? It looks beautiful. Dual SD cards connection via uh, USB-C, but also you can power it with uh, batteries. You can use mm -hmm. NFC. You can use the SD cards and QR scanning. It's got a camera now. Uh, and it looks like an old school Palm Pilot. So that's one for OPSEC. So check them out. They've got tons of other stuff. The Block Clock, the Open Dimes, the Sats Cards, the Tap Signers, everything. So much stuff. Uh, I buy it all. So go check it out. Coinkite.com. You can use code BTC Sessions for 5% off everything. Start9.com, your sovereign computing solution. Uh, if you're not running a node, 
You got to get on that. Um, you can then verify everything. Be self-sovereign. Run your Bitcoin stack, Bitcoin Core. Run a Lightning node. You can run things like mempool.space, join market, all kinds of great stuff. And then host your own data as well, including passwords, files, photos, Nostra relays, all kinds of great stuff coming out of them. So check them out. Head to start9.com, check out the Embassy One, or if you're looking for something super beefy to host your whole life on, the Embassy Pro is robust. So check it out. And then finally, if you're stacking sats and you have some priorities, some of which may include peer-to-peer -peer trading, uh, immediate self-custody, and no KYC, then HODL HODL is the place to go. You can sign up with no more than an email address and be peer-to-peer -peer trading in no time at all. Tons of different payment methods. Uh, they link you up with other individuals who are buying and selling sats. And uh, yeah, you don't have to give away an arm, a leg, and your firstborn child to achieve it. They also have a lending platform, which is never rehypothecated. Check them out. Again, hodlhodl.com. There's a link down below if you want to sign up right away and check them out. Uh, jump to Helipad for some of the uh, boostograms here. Uh, just a few new ones here. Um, here we are. Second Breakfast said, as a community, we really need to promote more peer-to-peer -peer solutions to acquire BTC. Agora Desk has been great non-KYC alternatives to local Bitcoins because we were talking about it being shut down last time. Possible future tutorial. I'll work on that. Absolutely. Uh, bullish on mini script from Cliff. Cliff also said 10 K to take out the trash. Was this recorded in 2020? I don't remember what that was referring to. Something must've happened on, uh, on the, uh, <laughs> on the Friday. Maybe we were talking about ordinals or something. I have no idea. Anyways. Uh, and Joey said, the only thing I'm more pumped for than getting my cold card Q1 is hashtag Benico, hashtag touching the tips at the conference as Bitcoin hits 100K as prophesized by yellow, hashtag team beard. <laughs> so many great, amazing hashtags there. Nico, what do you think of the hashtags? I mean, Joey's really taking it <laughs> to level here, isn't he? Benico, bro, touching the tips, <laughs> bullish on touching the tips in 2023. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's incredible it's it's incredible i love it <laughs> oh man oh man. how you doing oh, man. man dude i'm doing good I, I was looking at your when you were talking about uh coin kite and my so we moved into a new apartment my girlfriend and i which you met i took <laughs> i took my girlfriend away from a party at pacific bitcoin and i took her to bed's tutorial thing oh uh, <laughs> she didn't talk to me her. for three days <laughs> I mean, she's, I'm sure she's full of knowledge now. <laughs> In the end, it was the, the low time preference move. So <laughs> it was definitely low time. You know that meme, bro? It's so freaking funny of like, if you had 24 hours of me, what would you do? <laughs> that was my favorite meme I've ever been a part of that somebody created. And I, I laughed so hard. And then they like clipped my, I, I never realized that my intro music is porn music until, <laughs> until that clip. Uh, but yeah, no, it's, it's a good one. Uh, yeah. Well, dude, good to see you. Good um, to see let's, you too, man. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's redecorate a little uh, simply sessions. There we go. Um, what's been going on? What's, uh, what's top of mind? What, what am I pulling up? I see a video. <laughs> <laughs> is that what i should be pulling up first let's st let's start it bro let's okay, start with we'll, that we'll start it strong Wakata. all right here we go so what makes cryptocurrency such an energy hog well it comes down to three words proof of work traditional old school money is created by a central institution that validates it and distributes it but cryptocurrency relies on a network of computers to do this called miners these miners create new money and then verify transactions with the proof of work system. It's essentially a lottery that miners enter by attempting to solve a very complicated calculation. The calculation itself is completely pointless, like, um, like high school geometry. But it proves that you've made a computational effort to mine that Bitcoin. That's the proof of the work of these transactions. And whichever miner wins the lottery wins Bitcoin. I mean, that's why they play. Unfortunately, no matter who wins, the climate loses because those miners aren't actually cute little cartoon workers with hard hats, although that would be awesome. They're giant containers full of thousands and thousands of purpose-built computers using massive amounts of electricity. Emissions from Bitcoin alone are estimated to be comparable to Austria. 
So if crypto is here to stay, the question becomes, what do we do about its massive carbon footprint? Well, one option is to replace the proof of work system with a different system called proof of stake. Instead of miners doing calculations to enter the lottery, miners simply pay to enter. This uses way less energy. By some estimates, 99.9% .9 less. Ether, the world's number two cryptocurrency after Bitcoin, switched over to this method last year in a major upgrade known as the merge. Sorry, I tried to make that sound epic, but still pretty nerdy. Bitcoin has no plans to switch to proof of stake, but miners can still reduce their footprint if they switch to renewable energy. Bro. Oh. Bro. Ugh. I... I mean, okay, so the the mining explanation was slightly better than I was kind of expecting, but like all like the super complicated calculations obviously is not true. Um, the emissions thing one <laughs> is is wrong, and two is is irrelevant, and the the dick sucking of of proof of stake and ether is was horrendous as if the tr as if there was no trade off there as if it was like and oh you just you simply pay to enter wait so people pay if they if ha they have money then they get more newly created money i wonder if there's a problem with uh wealth disparity in that situation <laughs> Dude, so much propaganda, so much spin, the picking and fat, like the picking of little, like Bitcoin uses as much energy as Austria, but it doesn't get into the fact that Bitcoin uses stranded or isolated energy because if it wasn't stranded, uh, stranded or isolated, it wouldn't be economical for miners and that energy would already be going to waste, which is why it's so cheap and why Bitcoin miners use it in the first place. Completely missed that fact. Mm -hmm. Um it was spin. It was a high production value spin. That's literally what it was. Yeah. So bad. I mean, like Kumar is telling us and lecturing us about proof of work. So like, I don't know. <laughs> stay, stay in your lane, buddy. Like, <laughs> oh man. I don't know. I, yeah. Was, I mean, that was probably the dumbest thing I've said. Well, no, <laughs> I saw dumber stuff this week, but I digress. Um, yeah. So, so I don't know, man. I, I like Walker's take here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, th I thought this was a joke for at first, but it's real, truly shameful and pathetic anti-Bitcoin propaganda from Bloomberg. Now, Ben, at Simply Sessions, we connect the dots. Um, I think this is part of a more, uh, a larger collaborated effort at pushing down the climate narrative. Around the same time, Elizabeth Warren came out with this, EPA and Energy have the authority to require the crypto miners disclose their energy use and emissions. It's now time for, for them to use it. We need full transparency about how crypto mining is impacting our climate and electrical grid. Now, a lot of people forget, but Cal was part of the Obama administration of which Joe Biden was the vice president of, right? So interesting, uh, big coincidences, right? And now check this out. Biden administration acknowledges it can force Bitcoin mines to disclose pollution. Mind you, other industries don't have those same disclosure requirements. Why is it specifically Bitcoin mining that they're focused on? A very important question. Anyways, here's a quote from it. It says, quote, we urge you to, to those, we urge you to use those authorities to implement a mandatory disclosure regime as rapidly as possible. Now to shame the senators that are responsible for this, Senator Elizabeth Warren, Sheldon Whitehouse, Ed Markey, Jeff Merkley, Dick Durbin, and representatives Jared Huffman, Katie Porter, and Rashida Tlaib. All these people, they don't like Bitcoin. I think they don't want you using a money that doesn't steal from you. I think that's really what it's about. You can't control this. And I think that's they're using the climate as a justification in order to go after the industry itself. Mm -hmm. And, oh, man... I, so my worry here is that what you said, that there's no similar requirement for other industries. And the reason I'm worried about that is 
they can simply kind of like everything with Bitcoin, because it's so transparent in how it works, people can point at it and be like, it uses this much energy. That's bad. Um, not not drawing a parallel with the existing system. You know, how, how much money does it take to secure the petrodollar? How much energy does it take to secure the petrodollar? Um, I mean, take a look at the uh, the costs of uh, the the military industrial complex, and you know maybe you can start to ballpark the beginnings of the costs uh, of of securing the petrodollar um, and and the bloodshed that it requires. Uh, so when you don't have like comparisons, then all you literally have is just a number that you can float out there that is is meaningless. And so if they were like, my hope is that they try to do this and then miners are like, all right, as long as everybody else has to do the same, because then the numbers will be hilarious because mining a lot of it's hydro, a lot of it is waste gas. So then they can, you know, do the, the argument of like reducing greenhouse effect like for, for using up the methane and converting it to CO2. So as long as there's light comparisons, then science will be on their side. But if they're just going to take an arbitrary number, not ask information of any other industry, and then just float the number around, it's, it's just going to be, again, a witch hunt. Yeah, a hundred percent. Like, you, you hit the nail on the head, right? As long it's it's all arbitrary, bro. It's 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 exactly what you said. It's all it's all fuck. It's a fugazi wolf of Wall Street, bro. Yeah. Oh man. Oh man. But are we in for a fight, dude? Are we yeah. in for a fight? Yeah, absolutely. That's for sure. All right. So, uh, propaganda, hit pieces coming out. It's it. None of it is like. It's exactly what you said, Ben. Like. It, it, the, Rules for thee, not for me. These industries are okay. These industries are not okay. You know, as long as we say it, it's it's so ridiculous. But there is hope at the end of the tunnel. There is light at the end of the tunnel. This is a law that just got passed in Wyoming. Also, we had the we had a very similar, not exactly the same, but we had a very similar law passed in the state of Mississippi. In the state of Mississippi, it was protecting miners. Right. And now, and also I think node operators as well. Very interesting. I got excited for you when I heard that, you know, mm -hmm. when they were reading out the bills, like node operators, I was like, ah, Ben's going to be happy. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is fascinating. Wyoming lawmakers pass bill to prevent forced disclosure of private keys. It goes on to say, uh, no person shall be compelled to produce a private key or make private key known to any other person in any civil, criminal, administrative, legislative, or other proceeding in the state that relates to a digital asset, digital identity, or other interest or right to which the private key provides access unless a private key is unavailable or unable to disclose the re requisite information mm -hmm. nico read that word with <laughs> with respect to the digital asset digital identity or other interest or right and they love to use these big complicated words anyways um i suspect caitlin long played a major influence as this for anyone who doesn't know caitlin long is the founder and ceo of custodia bank which recently got denied the federal banking charter but that bank took advantage of the wyoming law in order to incorporate itself there so I suspect why uh, Caitlin Long was behind this. Now, what's really interesting, if you just see this on its face, man, it's just a big nothing burger. It's just a bunch of noise. But the fascinating part is the moves by the federal government towards Bitcoin and then the moves by the individual states towards Bitcoin. I think on a state level, I'm much more bullish on Bitcoin acceptance and adoption rather than the federal government because the federal government has the most to lose because they're the ones that issue the money in the first place. Yeah. Well, it's interesting there, like you could, you could technically, um, domicile a, a private key in Wyoming and then say, well, this key is, is within that state. And so then any, you know, it, even if you're living elsewhere, you could say, well, the key is in within Wyoming. And so it's pri protected by this law in which I'm not required to disclose it to you, even if other states have crappy laws about that. So, I mean, that, that could be interesting. 
Yeah, that's super. And that kind of goes into the game theory of, of everything, right? The game theory, dude, it's so freaking absolutely, absolutely fascinating. I feel like Voltage should, uh, sh if they're not based in Wyoming, they should create headquarters in Wyoming so that, I mean, technically they don't hold the keys for people, but like the, the node information and all that kind of stuff is, is there. So any, or, or unchained mm -hmm. or Casta places, you know, places that might have a key, um, if unchained, uh, sets up uh, their, their headquarters, uh, within, uh, within Wyoming, then that law will protect them from disclosing the private key of anybody's uh of anybody's multi-sig which is fantastic yeah yeah it, and, and they're gonna they're gonna go so hard against <laughs> you just said but yeah no it's absolutely true and and then that kind of goes into the idea of the importance of self-custody the fact that you can separate each individual's keys and spread them out through different jurisdictions now we know that wyoming is a great place to get a safety deposit box apparently mm -hmm. Um, and again, if you use a two of three or three of five, of which you could learn how to use those on Ben's YouTube channel, um, you, you know, you could put one of those keys in one of those locations. And even if they do get compromised, right, no one could really do anything with it. You know, the beauty yeah. of multi-sig, the power of multi-sig, better said. Love it. Love it. <laughs> All right. Moving on to the next one. You hear that, Sophie? We that you got well, next time we are we're learning how to take self custody. <laughs> uh, all right, um, uh, I can hear her screaming. Um, anyways, uh, Reuters, uh, Ben El Salvador's winning. It's it's winning hard. They are. It's winning hard. <laughs> IMF says El Salvador's Bitcoin risks have not materialized, but should be addressed. And this whole thing then i hate to read the whole thing but it really like you have to read it to fully embrace you know how hard they're spinning this um it's crazy anyways risks over el salvador's embrace of bitcoin have not materialized but use of the cryptocurrency still requires transparency and attention the imf said friday in a statement after a visit to the central american country quote given the legal risk fiscal fragility and largely speculative nature of crypto markets, the authorities should reconsider their plans to expand government exposures to Bitcoin, the IMF said in a statement. The annual visit by IMF staff followed a $600 million bond payment by El Salvador last month amid investor concerns over its financing sources and fiscal policy. The IMF so-called Article 4 visit has been sharply critical in the past. El Salvador's move to Bitcoin legal tender in September 2021 effectively closed the doors to IMF financing. While the lender noted that risks, quote, have not materialized due to the limited Bitcoin use so far. You see how they spin that? It's like, because Bitcoin isn't completely adopted, that's why things have not materialized. It wasn't that we were completely wrong. El Salvador had a record GDP growth, lowest murder rate in like 50 years or something. None of that have to do with it. It's because there was limited adoption of Bitcoin. And that's why our concerns are not like, who the F are these people? They're, you know how they call the psychopaths? They're the psychopaths, Ben. Yeah. They're the psychopaths. I love that they can't just take the L. Like they can't just be like, uh, maybe we overstated the risks. They're like, wow, well, it's, it's because not enough people are using it. It's not risky enough yet because there's not enough people taking the risk. But when they take the risk, it'll be risky. <laughs> it's, it's so, and, and then when it gets, and, the, and then when it like does really well, and El Salvador is sitting like on a fat stack and they have no debt anywhere. And they're like making their way up the ranks in terms of like uh, developing economies. They'll be like, well, it's it's going to implode any day now. <laughs> IMF, I'm calling it now. IMF is the Peter Schiff of nation state Bitcoin calls. They will perpetually until they die. They will perpetually call the end of Bitcoin and the end of El Salvador. Bro, I wish I had Opti's air horns right now because <laughs> that definitely deserved it. Um, I wish I, dude, I have epic music. I could have played it while you said that. It would have been great. <laughs> well, what soundtrack? 
<laughs> Fantastic. All right. El Salvador's Congress last month passed a law regulating the issuance of digital assets by both the state and private entities. President Nayib Bukele announced on Twitter a series of purchases of some 2,380 Bitcoin before mid-November when he said the Treasury would buy a Bitcoin every day. If those purchases were made, the government holds nearly 2,470 coins acquired for about 106 million U.S. dollars. The current value of that investment is 52 million U.S. dollars for a paper loss of over 50%. The numbers are Reuters the numbers are Reuters estimates as the government does not fully... <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> oh, man. Anyways, <laughs> quote, greater transparency over the government's transactions in Bitcoin and the financial situation of the state-owned Bitcoin wallet remains essential. The, you know what remains essential, IMF? The fact that you continue to steal from other countries, you continue to enslave other countries, neocolonialism with these so-called bailouts slash loans that come with all these crazy conditions of which the argentina one is the most despicable the the imf requirement for Ar argentina the bailout requirement was that the argentinian government must de-incentivize the adoption of bitcoin in Ar in argentina meanwhile the country is suffering from just reported this week bloomberg 99 percent inflation these people are despicable and they project onto us what it is they know they're guilty of themselves it's it's disgusting, really, when you when you see the IMF directly say like they're, they're dangling money in front of the politicians heads. Hey, you know, you're here. Take your take your money. Do with it as you please. Obviously, they're not going to do anything that fixes anything. They've been Argentina has been through this many times before. Um, so it'll just you know, it's it's a temporary fix until shit goes sideways so badly that they need to you know, be bailed out again, or they need to like have a new currency. Like it's, it's all going to, the currency goes to total shit and then they just need to get rid of it and create a new one. Um, it'll happen again and again, and it'll continue to happen until they like Bukele tell the IMF to go pound sand and go on a Bitcoin standard. Cause like, that's really, it's the only way out. And uh, I'm curious at what point they clue in. Um, I, I wonder I wonder if there's going to be a rising set of politicians that look at the ones that that uh, uh, took this deal and then look at El Salvador over the coming, you know, half decade or decade. And they say, holy geez, if we would have not taken that deal, we could have gone off on our own and look at how much better El Salvador is doing now. Like we need to we need to cut ties. I feel like that's going to be a sentiment in central and south america in the coming years yeah yeah and what country is next what do you anticipate it's tough i mean i, I think there's going to be a lot happening in africa like all of those french colonial states that that basically have monetary colonialism um with the the the, the frank um those are are just rife for the picking but i think that will be depending on how ballsy they get, I think that'll be more kind of like a ground up thing um, because there's been assassinations basically every time a leader of those countries wants to go off the Frank. Um, so yeah, I, I don't quite know, but I, I think there'll be a ton in and around Africa. I would love to see some other Central American countries, but I, I think again, a, a lot of it's more kind of ground up or like little, not quite kind of like this, uh, little, uh, I, I don't know how you would even call it. Like what is Madeira? It's like, it's off of Portugal, but it's like a, a, a kind of like a, a sovereign state almost. I think you'll see more of that first. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I agree. I think Africa is ripe and I, Jack Dorsey agrees with you, by the way. Uh, Madeira, like little, little, you know, be, Cristiano Ronaldo's from there, by the way. Uh, for anyone, that know. yeah, I didn't know that. Huh. yeah. Um, have you been? Did you see? Did you see? Uh, Pleb Music was dropping some amazing uh videos from there. I watched his film. Um, <laughs> my favorite was when they were talking to the energy board, and Greg Foss had like euros, and he's like. <laughs> It's like, this is fucking shit. And he throws it <laughs> on the table. He's like, afterwards, he's like, well, I ended up having to apologize because it was a little disrespectful. But like, I wanted to get the point across. <laughs> of course, Greg Boss would do that. I love it. Oh, I wish Max was in the room as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Anyways, anyways. So uh, let's check this out. Also, so this came out. Let's take it the date. This came out February 10th. And then this was a record they win. So we won, but now it's a record they win. How El Salvador's Bitcoin loving president won over Wall Street. Mm. Interesting, right? Anyways, he goes on to say, uh, for much of the four years since he won office, El Salvador's president, Nayib Bukele, has relished his role as an anti-establishment warrior. He sacked judges, exited a regional anti-corruption pact, spurred the International Monetary Fund, and adopted Bitcoin as legal tender. All the while, he seemed wholly indifferent to what foreign investors thought of him. Turns out the brash, ball cap, backwards, 41-year-old president is a hit with Wall Street. <laughs> is that why they changed tune? Is that why the IMF is like, you know what? You know what? We'll give you a win. Yeah. Good Lord. That's hilarious. I mean, of course. Like, look, he's he's actually doing some good things. And again, you I don't put too much faith in any politician. But like, th- compared to what they had before, I mean, it's it's better. It's definitely better. Um, you know, he's adopted something. He's adopted a monetary standard in which, like, even if he wanted to to take it back um you've already planted those seeds and so much of the country now understands self-sovereign money that the 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 speed at which things will proliferate compared to other nations like even though yeah you can go there and uh, you know from people that have been there they say well you know a lot of people still don't use it and like you you might have trouble actually using it in a lot of places and you can't just like live on it easily all the time yeah but like comparatively all of those seeds are planted with a younger generation, with people that are using it. And those people are orange pilled or a lot of them are. And that knowledge, like it doesn't go away. It's not like Bukele, you know, kicks open the door and is like, all right, Bitcoin's gone. Nobody use it anymore. And the people that actually understood it and were like, wow, this is actually revolutionary are going to be like, yeah, I guess we're done. Like they're, <laughs> that's not how it works to be like, Oh geez, and maybe he's realizing that he doesn't have control of this thing, but I still very much like that. Um, so yeah, it, it's, he's he's done something that if he changed his mind, he would not be able to undo, and that in and of itself um, takes a degree of of conviction and a degree of um, I don't want to say selflessness, but like a a degree of like wanting to grant more self-sovereignty to the people in your country. Yes, 100%. 100%. Dude, bullish on El Salvador, bullish on Central America, bullish on the global south because they're yep. the most incentivized to adopt something like Bitcoin. Yep. Anyways, so what crazy reality we live in, Ben, the re- re- reality stranger than fiction, Michael Saylor is throwing a Bitcoin conference. <laughs> not only is it a Bitcoin conference, a Bitcoin and Lightning conference. I know, I know a lot of people will be like, Nico, it's not just a Bitcoin conference. It's a Bitcoin conference for corporations, but it's still a Bitcoin conference. Anyways, mm-hmm. um, on May 3rd and 4th in Orlando, Florida, MicroStrategy will host our first in-person conference to discuss Bitcoin and Lightning for corporations. And the reason he's throwing it in Orlando is because he likes to go to Disney World. Just kidding. Totally made that up. But I would totally go to Disney World if I was going to this conference before um, because it's dope. Um, Anyways, Bitcoin and Lightning for Corporations as part of MicroStrategy World 2023, May 3rd to the 4th, Orlando, Florida. And it goes on to say Bitcoin and Lightning for Corporations is a unique opportunity for corporate leaders, financial executives and technology innovators to discuss the future of Bitcoin in the corporate world. The event features expert advice needed for corporations to plug into Bitcoin and Lightning and reimagine their business directly from the market's most credible voices and experienced practitioners. Here are some of the events that are being thrown. Bitcoin keynote, Wall Street and Bitcoin corporate treasury session. Uh, And then it's more like accounting and legal stuff. But Interesting. I feel like Ben would definitely go on the second day. Uh, Lightning yeah. keynote, uh, the Lightning ecosystem panel, MicroStrategy Lightning, uh, Lightning breakout sessions. That's Ben. He's throwing that. Yeah. One. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get. I didn't get my invite. <laughs> I waited the whole day to make that joke. Uh, so, uh, but yeah. So no, you guys get the point. In all seriousness, yeah. this is incredibly bullish. Right. Put put the jokes aside. You know, he's he's pushing 
Bitcoin for corporations. He wants corporation adoption. He wants corporations to choose Bitcoin as an alternative to fiat. It's a much better alternative, but I think it's just a matter of education. And I think that this is just that. Dude, I look at this and like part of me, like I, I, I don't want to say like I get emotional, but like I remember watching in God, it must have been 20, 2018, like in and around the summer of 2018. I remember seeing this image of a cat, like a like basically a cat kind of like drawn out with like just symbols. And it was something that was encoded on the Bitcoin blockchain um, that was like the first lightning transaction taking place. And it was and I remember seeing it and being like, I feel like this is a big deal. I don't quite understand everything about lightning, but like these humble beginnings, this tiny little thing. And then you, you've got this thing that's that is is enabling transfer of value globally is is instant it's censorship resistant it's it's cheap to use and then you've got people that are educating other again like major entities and corporations to use it the the thing that struck me on on this kind of um the 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 breakdown the schedule is under the the lightning day the thursday under the lightning ecosystem panel the the description of it says need an example of how lightning can impact your business voice over internet protocol voip upended the telecommunications industry lightning is analogous to moip money over internet protocol its ability to deliver secure transactions with scale and speed is a seismic shift in what's possible and that description it's it's pretty profound in that Think of of what it was like before VoIP. If you if some people watching are old enough to, to have not been around before that, but effectively, like you had switchboards directing phone calls over the phone lines, um, and you, you like the cost of making a phone call was insane. I backpacked Australia in two thousand and seven, and I called home on a payphone with a credit card, this is my main mistake, to a girl I'm obviously no longer with. <laughs> and I talked to her for about 20 minutes and I got a $300 charge on my card for a 20 minute phone call. Can you imagine anything like that today? It's like, wait, you didn't, you weren't able to talk to somebody for free. What, what world are you living in? And this is the same type of thing. People are going to be like, you paid to move money? Like you paid an, an exorbitant amount to transfer value everywhere. What what were you doing? Like other than <laughs> it's 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 monumental. And to see not only people getting it, but people helping spread this messaging and 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 actually getting down to the point. Like this is a single paragraph that basically says how important lightning is. That's incredible. Um, so again, hats off to Sailor and what he's doing. Hats off to Sailor, dude. This is absolutely incredible. Holy cow. Uh, we're just at the beginning. Um, okay. So the, also the big kahuna in today's news as well, Ben, check this out. SEC proposes rules that would change which crypto firms can custody customers' assets. Here are the key points. Shout out to Mackenzie Sigalos, by the way. She's a great job. Um, SEC chair, she covers the entire industry. So SEC chair Gary Genzer proposed amending federal custody requirements, expanding the rules to include assets like crypto, a change that would require crypto exchanges to gain further regulatory approval. The proposed changes would mandate custodians, including crypto exchanges, secure or maintain certain federal or state registrations, even as regulators are both increasing scrutiny on crypto companies and making it more difficult to secure regulatory approval for crypto products. And this is just the, they're enforcing the same requirements that are forced upon the traditional legacy financial system. And those requirements have been around since the depression era. And it, it's very simple, right? The custodian and the broker should be separate entities because if they're not separate entities, the, the, the incentives don't align. Mm -hmm. And how the entire uh, crap coin industry works today is the custodian is the same as the exchange, right? And what happens with that is the misalignment of incentives 
as the case with FTX, as the case with Binance. And I think that they're just pushing the industry to separate the two. Um, now, do I believe this could be successful? Uh, I think that this is just gonna force more exchanges to go overseas. I, I don't think that the uh, geographical monopoly that, you know, that that fiat currencies allows governments to have, I don't think it applies to the industry. I think there's also going to be a tremendous amount of pushback, not to mention, you know, the, our favorite shitcoin casinos, Coinbase, Binance, that have a tremendous amount of money. Therefore, they have a tremendous amount of political influence as well. So I don't know if this is going to pass. And then maybe they could have gone in a way with the, maybe they could have, maybe they should have implemented this years ago rather than wait for this massive exchange to blow up and for people to lose their life savings before they get their act together. I don't know. That's my two sats on it. Yeah, I, 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 I think a couple of things will happen. Like you said, more overseas and people just skirting those regulations with VPNs. Um, I think some will stick it out and try and, you know, try and provide services, but it'll mean the cost of services go up. So like you'll have higher withdrawal fees, which incentivizes you to leave your money on the exchange um, and, you know, just fees for everything. And they'll try and, you know, throw other products and services at you to try and recoup those losses that they have to spend on all these additional hoops to jump through. And then finally, I think you'll see more direct brokers where there is no custody available, where effectively it's like you send dollars and then at the same time you provide a withdrawal address so that the custody never actually happens. It's like, okay, the moment we get the dollars, we never have your Bitcoin. We give the dollars to whatever this brokerage is, and then it sends Bitcoin directly to you upon receipt. So I think you'll see more of that. Basically, basically what Bull Bitcoin does here in Canada, where you deposit dollars with them, they can hold your dollars. But the second you say, I want Bitcoin, you're required to provide a Bitcoin address and then you trade your dollars for Bitcoin and it gets sent out immediately. So you'll probably see more of that to get around the custodian requirements in the US, which will be a positive for you guys down there to have more of that. I think more non-custodial Bitcoin exchanges is a positive thing. Yeah, I, I, I think I, I don't see how this would really affect the Bitcoin industry. I think, you know, it's just minor little changes here and there. Like, I, I think that I was mostly focused on the the crypto for like because that it, it like it really, really affects them. Yeah. You know, it oh, really, yeah. really like, affects them. All of the changes in and around, obviously, like the staking programs and all the shit that they try to pull and trade and do this. And we want to hold all your money. And yeah, I, I think, um, yeah, it's, it's going to be they can't they won't be able to play as many games. And like, I think they just took so long with this is because they were trying to figure out all of the games that are being played, but they took too long almost. And again, I'm not super pro regulation. Like people can learn <laughs> from their mistakes, touch that stove. Um, but you know, they, they took in, in terms of their goals, they took a little too long to decipher all the games that were being played. And a ton of people got burned because, well, none of these things that they're now starting to roll out were in place. So I, I feel like FTX Gensler was like, oh, shit. I, I OK, we're doing stuff now. Look at look at all the things we're doing, because, you know, now there's pressure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, they waited for the thing to blow up to be like, hey, we were here the entire time. You know, yeah. you know, the meme with the guy with the house on fire. He's like, well, it's OK. Like that. Yeah. That's what I feel this is. Yeah. Anyways. Ben, always a pleasure, dude. Dude, that was great. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, everybody go subscribe to Simply Bitcoin. Give Nico a follow. And uh, we'll, we'll do it again next week. Hell yeah. You know it. All right, man. Have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll see you guys. I'll see you soon. This was your Simply session. I love doing that. <laughs> <laughs> see you later, man. Peace, bro. All right, everybody. I got a few things I want to get out of the way before... We log off. I got some suggestions, some things that you should check out if you have not already uh, have not already heard these uh, pods and stuff like that. A couple things, a couple from Press and Pish that are worth checking out. Number one, uh, he had uh, Pierre Richard on uh, to talk, and Pierre Richard is a, a, a big critic of the NFTs and the ordinals and all all that crap that's happening right now. If your mempool is full, uh, Pierre Richard kind of breaks it down pretty well in regards to what's happening 
what can be done, should anything be done. All of that stuff is in this one. It's a pretty good listen. Now, what I will say is it's also worth listening to um, listening to the guy who created Ordinals. Uh, go listen to him uh, on Citadel Dispatch with, uh, with, uh, with Matt because that was a good episode too because of anybody that's going to have Casey on and like actually ask the important questions, it's, it's going to be Odell, right? So go listen to that one too. I'm like, I'm not quite finished it. I'm probably about 75% of the way through. So I got a little bit more to listen, but it's a good one. Um, it's interesting. And uh, Odell like brings up a, a lot of good questions that people just in general would want to know. Um, anyways, so I suggest that uh, the other one that I have not listened to yet, but everybody was saying uh, you should check out is Luke Broyles also on uh on Press and Pish with the Investors Podcast. Apparently, this one was awesome. Uh, he's actually going to be on uh, Why Are We Bullish? Not this week, but next week. So uh, looking forward to having Luke on. Uh, a few other things I've been uh, checking out this week. Um, if you haven't tried it now, I, I was going to show a tutorial for this, but I've not done it yet. So it'll be coming around next week. Uh, but uh, there's something called Cashew, which is a standard uh, to create Chalmian eCash funded by lightning. So basically super private transactions uh, with no fees associated um, based in lightning. And you can create kind of like communities in which you can transact. Literally nobody knows who owns anything. And then even when you spend out of a mint, uh, you're kind of hiding in a crowd. So there's no way to even really tell who sent the transaction. Uh, so very interesting. I've been playing around with this one. Uh, called, uh, I think it's called nut, nut stash. <laughs> Anyways, worth checking out. And, uh, and it's super interesting in that you can actually, you can link up Noster to it and you can send it to somebody's uh, uh, public key. Um, there's a few kind of hoops you have to jump through. It's very, very early. Like this wallet in particular is in alpha. Uh, so nut stash is an alpha. And then um, uh, the other one just called cashew wallet. Uh, that's in like beta. So it's, it's, but it's worth playing around. Keep your eyes out for, I will be doing a tutorial and yeah. And then you can send, uh, transactions on Nostra as well, as well as outside of it. And it interacts seamlessly with lightning itself. So kind of cool. Uh, a couple other things. This was yesterday. Plan Marcus tweeted this out, but, um, two year anniversary of the birth of laser eyes. Uh, so it was, if those of you that don't know, it was the meme factory that created and more specifically chair force HODL. Uh, created laser eyes uh, at the time, laser ray to 100K, but now it's laser eyes till Fiat dies. Um, but they posted like the screenshots of them planning the release of the meme laser eyes and like all of the shit that went down in the background. And then Greg, of course it was Greg accidentally doing it early. And then everybody being like, all right, we're going laser eyes go. And then it just proliferated everywhere. So anyways, fun thread, go follow at plan underscore Marcus. And, uh, and you can find that thread there. It's a lot of fun. Um, also interesting. Uh, there's a little thing that happened earlier this week. I got to give a shout out to, uh, to Joe, Joe Hall. Um, so Jordan Peterson uh, is raising funds for an indigenous man um, named Charles Joseph. Uh, and I listened to the podcast of kind of what's going on during this guy's life. It's, it's an incredibly difficult listen. Um, he's been through a lot. Uh, and, but nonetheless, he's, he's had a streak of really bad luck. And so Jordan Peterson's trying to raise some money to kind of lift this guy back up, uh, to hopefully kind of put back together his life. Um, anyways, Joe Hall replied to Jordan Peterson and said, Awful story. Hey, posting a lightning address would open up donations from the entire world. Those without debit or credit cards. A lot of people have had enough GoFundMe because he posted it on GoFundMe and GoFundMe is the crowdfunding platform that shut down the, the truckers protests funds and everything. Um, he replied and said, I don't know how to do this. Enlighten me if you would. Um, and Joe actually messaged me. He's like, Hey, you should jump in here. Maybe you can help him out. Um, I responded, if you want me to walk you through it personally in a video call, I'd be happy to help out. A ton of people jumped in and, and, and you know, said, basically encouraged him. Um, I've, we made contact 
Um, I'm not going to promise anything, but um, I'm, I'm basically putting something together for him to kind of uh, show him how to, um, you know, set up everything to be able to accept Bitcoin payments in a way that he would be in con full control of his funds um, that would be, you know, as private as possible for donors um, and, and all of that. So I I'm in the midst of it. Uh, should be interesting. Uh, hopefully I don't scare him away with too many technicals. I'm going to try and keep it as simple as possible. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to like live stream it or anything. Um, you know, I, I just want to kind of help him out with this and, and hopefully he does find it helpful, but I'll, I'll keep you informed. And obviously you'll see it if he posts a, a page where, that you can donate with Bitcoin, but, uh, yeah, I'll keep you posted. Um, also these just arrived. These are, uh, a, a couple pieces that will go on my, uh, S9, my Bitcoin miner that is being retrofitted. Uh, to become a space heater. I'm almost there, just kind of uh, going to be getting a crypto cloaks case for it or a, a stand or what, I don't know, what enclosure uh, to make it look a little prettier than just like a hunk of metal sitting around making my room warm. Uh, so that's in the works. Very excited for that, actually. That'll be nice. Uh, it'll be a, a fun video to put together. Uh, it's more or less set up. I just need to kind of film it. So yeah, that's coming down the pipe. Um, yeah. And then we've got, why are we bullish tomorrow at 6 PM Eastern time? I've got ant, I've got a uh, bill from uh, Bitcoin Island, which is Boracay in the Philippines. Um, if you're unfamiliar, there's an Island where they have like, I can't even remember how, like just a stupid number of merchants on this small Filipino Island, um, which is incredible. Uh, so I'm very excited to hear from him. And then Decentra Suze, uh, who uh, Suzanne was, she recently was on a, a news show where she talked about how draconian cbdc's are and how people should be aware of what's coming excellent job by her so anyways very excited to have all these people on tomorrow at 6 p.m eastern time don't miss it um before we go hey are you heading to miami very excited about that it's coming up myself and my wife are going to be headed down uh it is may 18th through 20 in miami beach florida Bitcoin 2023, largest Bitcoin event on the planet. This will be my fourth time attending. I did 2019, 2020 was canceled, but I did 21 and 22. This is makes number three. Uh, and yeah, very excited. So 150 speakers, 15,000 attendees, 2,000 companies. It's crazy. I got to say, like, there's so much going on. There's so many people to meet, like the connections that you make, they're insane. If you're going to come down b.tc slash conference, uh, there's a code BTC sessions. You can get 10% off. Um, also, I'm going to be hosting my cold card workshop there. That is going to be on the 17th. So the day before everything kicks off, it's a four hour deep dive. We're going through everything with the cold card. We're going to do initial setup, backing it up, doing air gap transactions with Sparrow Wallet on your desktop. Uh, and then we're also going to dive into um, recovery and some of the more advanced features like BIP85 having like up to 10,000 accounts underneath that you can easily access and becoming an Uncle Jim for your family using that. All kinds of great stuff. So yeah, if you want to check it out, head to my website, btcsessions.ca. And there's an events page on there where you can uh, basically grab tickets, limited attendance. Uh, I don't even know what's left, but uh, yeah, grab them up, grab them while you can. This will be going up on the actual BTC, uh, the Bitcoin Miami website soon. Once they add their, um, their, uh, what do they even call them? Their external events, their, their uh, external events page, they'll have it there. And at that point, I think it'll probably sell out. So anyways, grab them before it goes up there if you want some. Uh, and then finally, if you need any additional help, uh, again, my website has tons of stuff in getting started. Or if you have newcomers that need some help, head there. Uh, One-on-ones, there's tons of info, tutorials, all that stuff is there. Uh, and with that, I'm out. Uh, if you want to help the show in another way, hit up the sponsors I mentioned again down below. You can drop a tip at my strike page, strike.me slash BTC sessions, type in any amount, hit the tip button. You see a lightning invoice, or if you tap to the right, a regular B Bitcoin QR code. With that, I'm out. Have yourselves a wonderful day or evening. And I'll see you guys next time for your daily session. We have BTC sessions. Bitcoin is F your money. You can't stop it. Get yourself some Bitcoin and hold it yourself. Peer-to-peer -peer exchange. You know, people are going to organically come to it and gravitate towards it, especially in the world we're living in now. It's incredible. It's a great tool. And I can't wait to see it proliferate everywhere.
Bitcoin. <lacht>